See, I have this thing where I chronically have to rearrange my room every two to three months. Otherwise, I feel insane. Do I wish this was the case? No, it's very troublesome to take your whole room, lift everything up, and then put it back down in another place, especially if you have carpet. But it also makes me happy to, to do it. So I guess it's okay. So I'm really crunching to get in the frame right now. I don't know why I didn't just put you at a higher angle. My bed is unmade. I actually just woke up and now I'm, I've tasked myself with this morning before I start my actual work, I'm going to rearrange my room in a way that feels peaceful to me. And I'll show you what we're working with because right now it's, um, it's a lot to look at and process, which is, that's a tough nut for me to swallow due to the fact that I really like having a clean and organized and minimal space. This is gross. Like I haven't even brushed my teeth, been drinking my coffee, teeth unbrushed. I'm in my underwear. You can barely tell, but I got my little hot, little red hot booty shorts on. But yeah, I'll take you, I'll take you around. I'll give you the tour. Hi all, little room tour for you. Show you what we're working with and then we'll talk it through and then try to figure it out. I also just got a new desk and chair, really awesome chair from FlexiSpot. And that will be mentioned at the end of the video because there's a discount code, it's a whole thing. Anyways, I really like my new things, but I'm that's sort of, I think I'm centering the room around the desk because that's like the most important thing aside from the bed piece. And that's a pretty important piece of the whole puzzle. Okay, hi all, hi. We got some key pieces to note here. This would be the bathroom. That's my toilet. This is the bathroom door. This is the entrance to my room. So we have sort of a dual door situation happening. Basically that means this corner has to remain untouched. And then we have the desk piece. This is not the chair from FlexiSpot. This is my old chair and it's a standing desk, so we can do so so many things with that. My mirror, should probably put some pants on just in case we get sort of the ass piece in the in the shot accidentally. This is the bed in the in this corner. So remember how we had this corner over here? This is the sleeping corner currently. Now I don't like where my bed is, partially because when I go to make my bed in the morning, this crevice is very frustrating to me to try to get my little feet into the Mariana's trench and then like put the sheets on the bed and then try to not get, like I'm, I'm, I'm sweating and seeing red just thinking about it and I do that every morning, so, okay. So my bags, my bags hook. My bags hook, closet piece. This is currently where I keep, listen, I like, I'm being so vulnerable right now showing the temporary state of things, but we'll get, I have, to, I have something to say on that, but we'll get into that later. This is where I keep my folded clothing. Well, I almost said Marie, Marie Antoinette, I almost said Marie Antoinette. Um, Marie Kondo, we just rearranged our living room because we're preparing to move and we're trying to like downsize all of our furniture and keep it minimal. So this used to be in our living room. I want to keep this. I do not want to keep that. So we're going to be replacing the clothing from, from in there to in here. My arm is getting so tired. Another thing to note is that this plant I don't know what's happening with that. I think it's temporary. This also used to be out in the living room. I've had this plant for years and it's so big and I'm really proud of it, but 
problem is we sort of have a cat who is addicted to eating plants and then throwing up. So that had to be taken out of the living room and it cannot be placed anywhere else in the living room other than the highest point. And I'm not, I'm really honestly not loving where it is. This is, it's almost not fitting on the shelf at this time. And I am scared that if I even like snag on one of these, it's gonna dump on my head and crush me like a accordion Looney Tune style. Previously on this shelf, as you might've seen from my previous vlogs, I did have the portal gun, which I don't know how I feel about that. Like 12 year old me would be like, you are the coolest human alive. But now I'm like, am I giving millennialthinkgeek.com oh, my, this is a nerdy space, but also an adult space. You know, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. It does look pretty cool with the plants. You know, it's giving aperture, but like I was saying, what used to be on my shelf was a whole lot of this action, okay? A whole lot of this action. And currently there's only three totems at this time. The rest of them have been scattered randomly on any surface I could find. And this shelf really was originally for that purpose. It was for my little designer toys and knickknacks. And I will say, hey, knickknacks stress me out. Bric-a-brac freaks me out. Like I love items that are connected to a memory and I love designer toys the way that they look. Like I love having these guys on my desk back there. But equally, the fact that I have to put them somewhere and I have to cover surfaces does kind of stress me out. So trying to find a happy medium. Really, this, this shelf was the happy medium, like taking all of those things and putting them in one succinct area. So this is what I'm thinking. I love a corner bed moment. And like, I don't know, something about being against the wall is very comforting but I thought maybe it's time to be a middle of the room bed person. I've done that once before and it was fine, but I don't know, it's gonna be a lot of work to like move all this stuff around just for me to be like, mm, I actually hate how that feels. So moving the bed to the middle of a wall, you know, like the, the backside is up against the wall. Wouldn't that be insane if I just put the bed in the middle? not touching any wall. Uh, I'm going to butt the head up against one of the walls and then it'll be kind of free floating on both sides to make it easier to make the bed. I have so many things running through my head and I don't know if you care at all. Is this interesting to you whatsoever? I definitely cannot put the bed on this wall if the plant is dangling and tickling my face in the middle of the night. I mean, it's even, it would be more than tickling my face. It would be hooking into my mouth and I'd be eating the plant. Then there's this wall, which it could be put up against. And then if I don't end up doing the middle of the wall situation, I could just put it here. But then I think I would have the same or similar issue of making my bed and having to kind of shove myself in the corner Okay, I have two pieces of good news. One of which is I put pants on. Second of which is that I brushed my teeth. That's the good news. And the bad news is I am gonna make a diagram. I did this for our living room as well because we were just really stumped on where we could put furniture with the space that we had. So I basically just made little boxes. I even filled them with the color and texture of the objects in our living room sort of top down, and then I put each item on a different layer and then just moved it around as need be in the space. Obviously it wasn't like 100% to scale, but it was as close as I could get visually. And it really helped us in figuring out like a unique situation for our living room. Now I'm not gonna do the whole texture color thing with this. I think I'm just gonna try to draw boxes in a square, slight rectangle. Something that I also considered in the whole furniture situation is that I do like to use my nunchucks in my room. And I'm usually chucking in my room. So there's, if I move the bed in the middle, there's not gonna be a lot of space for the chucking per se, but I think that 
Like if the nunchucks fly out of my hand, which they're not super heavy to begin with, but if they do, if it lands on the bed, that's completely fine. I'd rather it land on my bed than like hit the portal gun. I don't know. Okay, let's make the diagram first and then see if that reveals anything to us. So we got the doors. Um, I have a feeling my sizing is all off. I think also the rectangle is more so like this. I'm also featuring the shelf here, I guess just to give myself an idea of if things are on top of it or hanging down that's above something. And with the bed will come the little side table that I have. It's probably like that big. I said I wasn't gonna do the colors, but I couldn't resist doing the yellow cart. So if the, originally I thought maybe the bed would go here against this wall. My only bummer was that to walk to the closet, I would have to kind of do an arc. I don't think I care too much about that, but in all honesty, I really like the way that this little mid-century modern bedside table looks. And it's nice that when I walk into my room, I see it directly because it's over here. I walk in through this door and then I see that with my plant on it, but I wouldn't be opposed to having it there. And then this cart could also go... I guess there's nothing underneath this, but I think with the bed being here, I still think that the bed is not quite to scale. Like it needs to be longer or something because I feel like there's such little space. I think I wanna keep the desk where it is because I kind of, I have some framed stuff on this wall that I think I want to keep it above my desk. And I don't want to move the framed things. It would be nice to have my windows completely freed up so that I could move the curtains without having to worry about something in front of it. Hmm. This is kind of nice, but then I run into the issue of crawling into the Marianas Trench again in order to make my bed. I also don't know if I'm loving my feet being towards the window. Not that, I don't know why I don't like that. Like, I don't think someone's gonna crawl in the window and suck on my toes. I just, I do kind of like the desk being away from the window, which I think is not a popular opinion. I feel less distracted when I am not looking out the window because out my window, there are neighbors. Like I'm looking across to someone else's unit. Okay, maybe I need to move the bed and then everything else will fall into place. Did this help me at all? I don't know. So in order to move the bed to where it needs to be, the dresser needs to move away from where it currently is. And in order for the dresser to move away from it cur where it currently is, I need to empty the contents of it, move the old dresser out of my room, leave the contents out so that the other one's not too heavy, move the bed in the dresser, and then put everything into the new dresser. And then hope that that is the right spot for it because otherwise I'm going to have to take the stuff out again. This is the portion of the video that kind of turns into a podcast because I just recorded a lot of footage of me moving things around and saying absolutely nothing because I was in the zone. I'm sure you understand. But I figured I could take this time to kind of chat with you about a topic that has been on my mind and 
that I think is kind of relevant to the content I make online and even just this video. It's part of the reason why I wanted to make this video in the first place. And it is that I feel we're experiencing, and I know this sounds dramatic, I feel that we're experiencing something called a vlogging epidemic. And I'm saying that like that's a term. That's a term that people say. No, I've made this up completely in my own time. Um, I just keep repeating it to myself, a vlogging epidemic. And what I mean by that is we're so saturated with vlogs, especially the last few years. And I'm sure that COVID has something to do with this, you know, being in lockdown, a lot of people joined YouTube and TikTok is really accessible. So people are making content online. And I think that that's a really great thing. I think it's important that we see lots of different types of lifestyles. And I enjoy the fact that vlogs can help us to feel less alone and feel like we're kind of living vicariously through someone. The reason I do it is because I hope that I can keep you company. I hope that seeing my life can maybe make you feel like yours is <laughs> normal too. I, I, don't, I don't know what that specific feeling is. It's just like a sense of solidarity. And I realize that what I'm saying now and maybe the issues that I have, maybe I'm a part of it because I am a vlogger. I guess. I guess I'm a vlogger. I'm someone that makes content online in video format sometimes. So my issue that I want to complain about publicly here on the internet is that I just feel like I am seeing a lot of content being recommended to me that makes me feel kind of bad about my own life. And maybe that's my fault. Maybe that's on me. Maybe you don't feel that way at all. But there's just so many people filming and romanticizing their lives. I love it. I Good, good, great, yes. Like, romanticizing someone's life is a really positive thing. But I think we can forget, as the viewer, that what we're seeing is a highlight reel. You know, just as the, as the old internet saying goes, social media is just a highlight reel. And I'm, and I'm always saying that. But I forget that sometimes. I think it's very natural to forget that. And I'm being shown just thumbnails or like the first 10 seconds of the video as I'm scrolling through YouTube. And I'm immediately thinking, oh, I'm in my mid-20s. Why, why doesn't my life look like that? Why doesn't my house look like that? And you know, I'm sure that my videos have made some people feel that way. Unfortunately, I think it's just, the nature of the beast, but I just want to let you know, as someone who makes this content, it's a highlight reel, but I will always try to just show you my real life, and most of all, I just want to make you maybe laugh a little bit. I want you to have a good time, and I want you to feel like you're spending time with a friend, but yeah, that's kind of it. It's weird out there. It's the internet out there. So just uh, have fun and, hey, watch things that make you feel good, maybe. Try your, try your best. So while I was taking a break, this came in the mail, which is a calendar by Hello Sunroom. And I'm, I'm not going to go through every single day because I am afraid of dropping it at this time, but it's all Rizograph printed. Uh, it's gorgeous, and I forgot that I bought this, and it came today at the perfect time while I'm rearranging my room. My original plan was basically to put it all up on, on one wall. Like every single, all 12 months, I was going to put up at one time. I don't know where I'm going to do that now, though, because really the only wall that is empty is the one that's behind you right now. I, I have like you know, two things here and there's not much room besides that. So yeah, sunroom, hello sunroom. So now I need to figure out where to put that. But besides that, I think, I think I've got it all done and figured out. I do also need to put the cord organization 
underneath my standing desk, like the wire is kind of loose and it came with hardware to like strap it into place up underneath the desk. So I'm going to do that now since I've decided the desk is going to stay there. I have one poster coming in the mail, but besides that, I think I'm going to leave the walls as is aside from the calendar, which don't know where that's going to go. Maybe I should only put a couple months up or just take it month by month like a normal person. As you've just seen, uh, I have a new standing desk and a new chair, and that is thanks to FlexiSpot, who is the sponsor of this video. Thank you, FlexiSpot, for sending me both of those items. So the gorgeous standing desk is their Comhar model, which is going to go ahead and be super stable thanks to the T-frame at the bottom. And this means the desk is not going to be rocking back and forth when moving it up and down. It also has a drawer for storing your secret ugly items while you film a vlog about your perfect aesthetic life, which I think is stunning, stunning feature. I can personally fit my entire scanner in there, inside the drawer, which thank God, because that thing is an eyesore and was previously leaning up against my wall. The E7 Pro supports up to 440 pounds of weight, so I was able to go ahead and hop on up there, as well as have the option to place numerous other things on top. I'm not doing that at this time, but it is good to have the option. As you might know from the thumbnail, I feel crazy when things are the same for too long. So being able to adjust the height and choose whether I stand or sit at my desk is really important to me. If I do move forward with going the sitting route, I of course have the beautiful FlexiSpot C7 chair. This chair, if you couldn't tell from just visuals alone, is spacecraft levels of ergonomic support, and I do hope that FlexiSpot considers deploying some of these in future aircraft. I've never claimed to understand lumbar support, but now I can say with confidence that I do, in fact, due to the lumbar piece of the C7 chair. A nice feature is the locking system in the back where you can actually choose to keep the lower lumbar piece in one place at one angle. I tend to move around a little bit more, so I prefer to have support at all times during all movements. So I leave my chair unlocked personally. It's gonna go ahead and not be only supporting the lower back, but also the upper back and the neck and head additionally. This is the life. The arms are adjustable not only in height, but also angle, which I believe they are calling a 4D experience. The back piece is breathable and supportive mesh, which for me is key because as I think I've stated in every single video, I produce an unnatural amount of sweat on what I believe to be a daily basis. The seat can lean back to 128 degrees. Couldn't really tell you where that is on the protractor, but I do know that it feels good when I do it, and it can support up to 320 pounds. This is truly a brilliant as well as gorgeous chair designed for all postures. Just as an aside, the assembly was really simple, like shockingly simple and I had my roommates available to help me put it together, which made it go faster, but if I was alone, I would have been completely fine assembling it by myself. So head on over to flexispot.com and use promo code YTB30 for $30 off on orders over $500, and thank you Flexispot for sponsoring today's video. That's kind of all I have for you at this time. Just kind of rearranged my room and put it on YouTube, partially to hold myself accountable and partially because maybe you needed some company doing this kind of thing too. I know that there's a lot of content out there that just seems really idealized 
and it freaks me out so I'm sure it probably freaks some of you out too and I think it puts a lot of pressure on all of us to have these really perfect looking lives and I mean this looks really nice, right? Like, I think it does, that's why I did it. But I just wanted you to see what goes into, like, having a space like this, and then the before and after, and showing you my thought process, and how things just don't come together magically, and not everything is aesthetic all the time. You probably don't need to hear this, you understand, but I just thought it might help to hear. Thank you again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video and sending me that awesome desk and chair that's there you go i'm i'm a person in my 20s on the internet and this is what i'm choosing to do with my time thanks for being here if you like this kind of content you'll probably like what's on my patreon maybe i don't know it's uh, patreon.com slash jamie green illustration and uh, i'm jamie green illustration on all social media